9.2, solving equations by completing the square. When we are completing the square, we are finding our new C term. So we are going to use the formula B over 2 squared. So if we look at the first set of examples, we're asked to complete the square. So we're just finding the C term here to make this a perfect square trinomial. Uh, so if we look at example A, we have x squared plus 14x is equal or plus something. we got to find that something. So we're going to start by taking that b, in this case b is equal to 14, and we're going to divide it by 2 and square it. So we're going to use b over 2 squared. The b is 14, so this is going to give us 14 over 2 squared. The 14 over 2 is 7, and 7 squared is 49. So that 49 is what would go in for that C term. Remember when we're doing this, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. For B, our B is negative 9. So we're going to use B over 2 squared to find our C term. This is going to be negative 9 over 2 squared. The negative 9 over 2 cannot simplify, so we're just going to square both the top and the bottom of this fraction to give us 81 over 4. So this 81 over 4 would be that C term. For our next set of examples, we're completing the square to form a perfect square trinomial. So we're doing the same exact thing, except with these, it's not giving you, giving you that plus and an answer kind of thing. Uh, so it's not giving you a blank here. So we are finding our C by doing that B over 2 squared. So for A, our B is 4. So to find b over 2 squared, we are going to do 4 over 2, and we are going to square it. 4 over 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So we are going to complete the square here. We're going to plug this in to give ourselves x squared plus 4x plus 4, and that is our perfect square trinomial. For b, we have x squared minus 8x. Our b here is negative 8, so we'll, you, we'll use b over 2 squared. So this is going to be negative 8 over 2 squared. The negative 8 over 2 is 4, negative 4. So we square that, and we get 16. So this is leaving us with a perfect square trinomial of x squared minus 8x plus 16. For C, we have x squared plus 12x. Our B is the 12, so we're going to do B over 2 squared. So this is going to leave us with 12 over 2 squared. 12 over 2 is 6, and 6 squared is 36. So x squared plus 12x plus 36 is our perfect square trinomial. For example, 3, we have to solve each equation by completing the square. So now why? when we do this, we want to get everything on the same side with, or sorry, on the opposite side of the x squared and the x. So in this case, for a, we have x squared plus 4x is equal to 3. There's nothing on the same side as the x squared and the x, so we're good to go. From here, we're going to do the same thing that we just did, identify our b. In this case, it's negative 4. We're going to do our b over 2 squared to get our c term. Once we get our c term, we're going to add it to both sides of this original equation. So we're going to have negative 4 over 2 squared, which gives us negative 2 squared, which is 4. With this 4, we're going to add it to both sides of this equation. So we're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 3 plus 4. So again, we added it to both sides of this equation. From here, you're going to factor your left side, you're going to add your right side. So when you factor your left side, you're going to have x minus 2 squared is equal to 7. Now solve for x. So work what we did work with what we did in the couple sections before this, where we take the square root of both sides. So we're going to have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 
the square root of 7. Remember that plus or minus goes in front because we're taking the square root both sides. Now we'll get x by itself. Add the 2 to both sides, and we're left with x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. For b, we have x squared plus 16x is equal to 36. So once again, our c term is on the opposite side of the x and the x squared, so we're good to go. Identify your b, it's 16. Now do b over 2 squared. b is 16, so that's 16 over 2 squared. That's going to give us 8 squared, which is 64. That 64 is getting added to both sides of this equal sign here. So we're going to have x squared plus 16x plus 64 is equal to 36 plus 64. We're going to factor the left side, add the right side. So it's going to be give us x plus 8 squared is equal to 100. Now take the square root of both sides. The square root of the x plus 8 squared is going to just be x plus 8. And the square root of 100 is plus or minus 10. Now because you took the square root of 100 and you're getting a whole number here, and it's an actual number, not this, the radical left over, you're going to form two equations. So you're going to have x plus 8 is equal to negative 10, as well as x plus 8 is equal to 10. And you're going to solve for x in both of these. So we're going to subtract 8 from each side, and we're going to be left with x is equal to negative 18. Subtract 8 from each side on this one, and we get that x is equal to 2. So both of these are your solutions. For C, we're given x squared minus, minus 3x minus 18 is equal to 0. So for this one, we're going to start by adding the 18 to both sides to get x squared minus 3x is equal to 18. From here, your b is negative 3. So do your b over 2 squared. That's negative 3 over 2 squared which is 9 over 4. You're going to add this 9 over 4 to both sides of your equal sign. So this is going to give us x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 18 over 1 plus 9 over 4. To turn that 18 over 1 into a fraction that's something over 4, we're going to have to multiply the 18 by 4 and keep it over 4. So this 18 over 1 is going to turn into 72 over 4. So 72 over 4 here. And then we can add these. So from here, we're going to factor the left, add the right. So we have x minus 3 over 2 squared is equal to 81 over 4. Now take the square root of both sides. This is going to leave us with x plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus 9 over 2. So again, we're going to form two equations here. I'm just going to move up over to this side up here. We're going to have x plus 3 over 2 is equal to negative 9 over 2, as well as x plus 3 over 2 is equal to positive 9 over 2. So we subtract 3 over 2 from each side for both of these. So x is equal to negative 12 over 2, which is 6. Negative 6, I'm sorry. And x is equal to 6 over 2, which is 3. So x is equal to negative 6, and x is equal to 3 for this one. For d, we have x squared minus 10x is equal to 11, our constant's on its own side, so we're going to find b is equal to negative 10. Now do b over 2 squared, so negative 10 over 2 squared is negative 5 over, or sorry, negative 5 squared, which is 25. We are going to add the 25 to the 11 as well as the other side of that equal sign to give us x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 11 plus 25. This is going to leave us with x plus 5, or x minus 5, I'm sorry, x minus 5 squared is equal to 36. 
So we take the square root of both sides here, and we're going to have x plus x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus 6. So then from here, turn this into two equations. x minus 5 is equal to negative 6, and x minus 5 is equal to positive 6. Move the 5 over, add it to both sides. We're going to get x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to 11. For E, we are given x squared plus 6x is equal to 2. So our constant's already on, the same, on its own side. We're going to find B, which is 6, then do B over 2 squared. So that's 6 over 2 squared, which is 3 squared, and that is 9. So the 9 is going to be added to both sides of our equal sign. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 2 plus 9. So now this is going to give us x plus 3 squared is equal to 11. We take the square root of both sides, and we get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11. We move that 3 over by subtracting it from each side, and we get that x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 11. Sometimes with these, you will have an A that's something other than 1. When that's the case, you want to divide the entire equation by whatever A is. So, like, for example, A, we have 4x squared minus 8x is equal to 21. We're going to divide the entire equation by 4 to make sure that that A is 1. So we are going to do, have x squared minus 2x is equal to 21 over 4. From here, our B is negative 2. So do b over 2 squared, so that's going to be negative 2 over 2 squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is 1. We add that 1 to both sides of our equation, so this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 21 over 4 plus 1. Now that 1 is the same thing as 4 over 4, so that way your denominators are the same and you can add those numerators. If we factor that left side, we're going to have x minus 1 squared. If we add the right, we would have 25 over 4. From here, take the square root of both sides. So x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 5 over 2. Now, when I go to rewrite this, I like to change that 1 into something over 2. So that way, it's a lot easier for me to add or subtract that 1 over. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 2 over 2 is equal to negative 5 over 2, and x minus 2 over 2 is equal to positive 5 over 2. I now can add the 2 over 2 to each side, and it makes it a lot easier for myself because my fractions have like denominators, and now I can add or subtract easily. So x is going to equal negative 3 over 2. And if I add the 2 over 2 to both sides here, I get that x is equal to 7 over 2 as well. So negative 3 over 2 and 7 over 2 are your solutions for example for A. For B, we're given 9x squared plus 6x is equal to 10. So we would divide each everything, each term, by 9 to get x squared plus 2 over 3x is equal to 10 over 9. Our constant is on, this, on its own side, so we're going to take that B, which is 2 thirds, and we're going to divide it by 2 and square that. When we, when we divide fractions, we keep change flip. So 2 over 3 times 1 over 2 squared. The 2's would turn into 1's, so it's just 1 third squared, which gives us 1 ninth. We're going to add this to both sides of our equal sign. So this is going to leave us with x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth is equal to 10 over 9 plus 1 ninth. Factor your left side, add your right. So you have x plus 1 third squared is equal to 11 over 9. Take the square root of both sides. So x plus 1 third 
is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11 over 3. From here, subtract the 1 third. We have x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 all over 3. For example, C, we have 16x squared minus 16x plus, is, sorry, is equal to 5. So we're going to divide everything by this 16 to get x squared minus x is equal to 5 over 16. Our B is negative 1, so that's going to be negative 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. We can add this 1 over 4 to both sides of our equal sign to give us x squared minus x plus 1 fourth is equal to 5 over 16 plus 1 fourth. Now that 1 fourth is the same thing as what over 16? 4 over 16. So adding it, the 4 over 16 is the same thing. Factor the left side, that's going to be x minus 1 half squared. Add the right side, that's going to be 9 over 16. Take the square root of both sides, it's going to cancel out this squared, so x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus 3 over 4. Turn this into two equations, you're going to have x minus 1 half is equal to, 3, to negative 3 over 4, and x minus 1 half is equal to positive 3 over 4. Now, when I go to subtract, or sorry, add this 1 half to both sides, I'm going to turn it into a fraction with a denominator of 4 to give myself 2 over 4 because it's the same exact thing. It's going to make my life a lot easier to add or subtract with that three, negative 3 fourth and that positive 3 fourth. So x is going to equal negative 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, which is negative 1 fourth. And if I add 2 fourths to each side on this side or on this equation, I get x is equal to 5 fourths. For D, we have 4x squared plus 12x is equal to 5, so we're going to divide everything by that 4 to get x squared plus 3x is equal to 5 fourths. Our B is 3, so B over 2, that's 3 over 2 squared. That's going to be 9 over 4. We're going to add it to both sides to give us x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 5 over 4 plus 9 over 4. So we're going to factor the left side to give us x plus 3 over 2 squared is equal to 5 plus 9 is 14 over 4. We're going to take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 14 over 2. From here, subtract the 3 over 2 from each side. Because our denominators are the same, we can write this as x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 14 all over 2. And again, we did that because our denominators are the same, so you can write it as one fraction. For your next set of examples, we're solving each equation by completing the square. So for A, we have 2x squared minus 6x is equal to 5. We divide everything by that 2 to get x squared minus 3x is equal to 5 over 2. Our B is negative 3, so that's going to give us negative 3 over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. I'm going to add this to both sides of my equal sign, so x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 10 over 4. That 5 over 2 is equal to what over 4? It's 10 over 4. So 10 over 4 plus 9 over 4. I'm going to add on my right side, and I'm going to factor on my left. So I'm going to have x minus 3 over 2 squared is equal to 19 over 4. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So x minus 3 over 2 is equal to 
the plus or minus square root of 19 over 2. So once again, I'm going to have a fraction with the same denominator on both fractions when I move this 3 over 2 over, so I can rewrite it as 1. So I have x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 19 all over 2. For b, we're given 3x squared plus 3x is equal to 16, so we're going to divide everything by 3. So we're going to have x squared plus x plus 16 over 3. Nope, is equal to x is equal to 16 over 3. Now, um, my b here is 1, so I'm going to have 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. I'm going to add this 1 fourth to both sides, x squared plus x plus 1 fourth is equal to 16 over 3. 16 over 3 and 1 fourth have a least common denominator of 12. So we're multiply this by 4, this by 3. So this is going to give me 64 over 12 plus 3 over 12. Oops. So this is going to factor out to be x plus 1 half squared is equal to 67 over 12. I take the square root of both sides. I'm going to have x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 67. That 12 is 4 and 3. The 4 is 2 and 2. So over 2 square root 3. From here, I need to rationalize that denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. And this is going to leave me with x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 67 times 3 is one second, 2 to 1. So it's the square root of 201 over 6. From here, we're going to change the 1 half into something over 6 so our denominators are the same. So this 2 is going to turn into a 6, making the 1 a 3. So we're going to subtract 3 sixths from both sides. So I'm going to have x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 201 all over 6 as my solution. For c, we have 1 half x squared plus 3x is equal to 14. So because I have this fraction, I want to get rid of this fraction. I'm going to multiply the entire equation by the denominator of that fraction. So that way I get rid of it. And my coefficient of the x squared is 1. So we're going to have x squared plus 6x is equal to 28. Now my b is 6. I'm going to do b over 2 squared. It's going to give me 6 over 2 squared, which is 3 squared, and that is 9. I'm going to add this 9 to both sides of this purple equation. So I'm going to add it to the x squared plus 6x to give me x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 28 plus 9. So I'm going to factor my left side. That's going to give me x plus 3 squared. I'm going to add the right side. It's going to, give, it's going to give me 37. Now I take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 37. I'm going to subtract that 3 from each side to give us x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 37. D, I have 2x squared minus 4x is equal to 16. So I'm going to start by dividing everything by 2 to give us x squared minus 2x is equal to 8. My b is negative 2, so I'm going to do negative 2 over 2 squared. That gives us negative 1 squared, which is 1. I add the 1 to both the 8 and the other side of the equation to give us x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 8 plus 1. I'm going to factor that left side to give us x minus 1 squared is equal to, and then that 8 plus 1 is 9. We take the square root of both sides, so x minus 1 
is equal to plus or minus 3. I have a 3 here. It doesn't have a radical, so I'm going to do x minus 1 is equal to negative 3, as well as x minus 1 is equal to positive 3. I add the 1 to both sides. We get x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 4. For e, we have 5x squared plus 8x plus 1. So I'm going to divide, or I'm sorry, I'm going to move over that 1 first by subtracting it from each side. So this is going to leave me with 5x squared plus 8x is equal to negative 1. Then I'm going to divide everything by that 5 to get x squared plus 8 over 5x is equal to negative 1 over 5. That b is 8 over 5, so we're going to do 8 over 5 divided by 2 over 1 squared, which is the same thing as 8 over 5 times 1 over 2 squared. So that 2 becomes a 1, the 8 becomes a 4. We're just going to have 4 fifths squared. The 4 fifths squared is 16 over 25, so that's what we are going to add to both sides of this equation. So we're going to have x squared plus 8 over 5x plus 16 over 25 is equal to negative 1 over 5. It turns into negative 5 over 25 plus 16 over 25. So from here, we're going to have x plus 4 over 5 squared is equal to 11 over 25. We take the square root of both sides, so x plus 4 fifths is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11 over 5. So once again, when I subtract the 4 fifths from each side, I have the same denominator. So I'm going to write this as one fraction to give us x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 11 all over 5. We are going to look at some of these extra price problems to get some more help here. Uh, for 1, we have x squared minus 4. x is equal to 17, so my b is negative 4. We're going to do b over 2 squared. So that's going to give us negative 4 over 2 squared, which is going to be negative 2 squared, and that is 4. We're going to add the 4 to both sides of our equation to get x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 17 plus 4. So I'm going to factor my left side. This is going to leave us with x minus 2 squared is equal to, add the right side, 21. We're going to take the square root of both sides. It's going to give us x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 21. And then we are going to add the 2 to both sides to get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 21. For 2, we have y squared plus 8y is equal to 10. So our b is 8. We're going to do b over 2 squared. So that's 8 over 2 squared. That gives us 4 squared, which is 16. So we're going to add this to both sides of that equal sign. So y squared plus 8y is, sorry, plus 16 is equal to 10 plus 16. So we're going to factor to get y plus 4 squared is equal to 26. We take the square root of both sides. We're going to get y plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 26. And then from here, we want to subtract that 4 from both sides. So we get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 26. For 3, we have w squared plus 6w is equal to negative 3. Our b is 6, so it's going to be 6 over 2 squared. So that's going to give us 3 squared, which is 9. We add that to both sides of the equation. We're going to get w squared plus 6w plus 
plus 9 is equal to negative 3 plus 9. This is going to then turn into w plus 3 squared is equal to 6. We take the square root of both sides, so w plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. Move the 3 over, subtract it from each side. We're left with w is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 6. For 4, we have c squared plus 18c plus 100, or sorry, minus 175 is equal to 0. So we're going to add the 175 to both sides to get that constant by itself. And we're going to have c squared plus 18c is equal to 175. From here, our b is 18, so b over 2 squared is 18 over 2 squared. It gives us 9 squared, which is 81. Now add the 81 to the 175 and the c squared plus 18c. This is going to leave us with c squared plus 18c plus 81 is equal to 175 plus 81. The 175 plus 81 gives us 256, so we can rewrite this as c plus 9 squared is equal to 256. We take the square root of both sides, so c plus 9 is equal to 16. And we can put that plus or minus in front of it, and we form two equations. So c plus 9 is equal to negative 16, and c plus 9 is equal to positive 16. We're going to subtract 9 from each side. We get c is equal to negative 25 and c is equal to 7. For 5, we have v squared minus 20v plus 19. So we're going to add, or sorry, subtract the 19 from each side. We're going to get v squared minus 20v is equal to negative 19. Our b is negative 20, so it's negative 20 over 2 squared. That's negative 10 squared, which is 100. We add this to both sides. So v squared minus 20v plus 100 is equal to negative 19 plus 100. We take the, the, we, sorry, we factor the left side, add the right side. So v minus 10 squared is equal to 81. Now take the square root of both sides. So v minus 10 is equal to plus or minus 9. Form your two equations. v minus 10 is equal to negative 9. v minus 10 is equal to positive 9. And solve for both. So add the 10 to both sides. We get v is equal to 1. And v is equal to 19. For 6, we have z squared minus 6z minus 307 is equal to 8. So we're going to start by adding that 307 to both sides. So we have z squared minus 6z is equal to 315. Our b is negative 6, so it's negative 6 over 2 squared, which is going to give us negative 3 squared which is 9. We add the 9 to both sides. So z squared minus 6z plus 9 is equal to 315 plus 9. Factor the left, z minus 3 squared. Add the right is equal to 324. Take the square root of both sides. We're going to have z minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 18. Form your two equations. So z minus 3 is equal, do this with the right color, z minus 3 is equal to negative 18, and z minus 3 is equal to positive 18. Move the 3 over, add it to both sides. We're going to have z is equal to negative 15, and z 
is equal to 21. For 7, we have y squared plus 18y plus 32 is equal to 226. So we're going to start by subtracting 32 from each side. We have y squared plus 18y is equal to 226 minus 32. So the 6 minus 2 is 4. The 2 turns into a 12, making the 2 a 1. So 12 minus 3 is 9, and then 1 minus 0 is 1. So from here, your b is 18. Do 18 over 2 squared. That's going to give us 9 squared, which is 81. And add the 81 to both sides here. So y squared plus 18y plus 81 is equal to 194 plus 81. We're in a factor, so y minus, or sorry, y plus 9 squared is equal to the 4 and the 1 is 5. 8 and 9 is 17, and then 1 and 1 is 2. So 275. Take the square root of both sides. We're going to have y plus 9 is equal to plus or minus the square root of that 275. We know that 5 goes into it evenly. 5 goes into 25 5 times with 2 left over. 5 goes into 25 5 times. So this is 5 and 11. So 5 square root 11. From here, we're going to subtract that 9 from each side. So we have y is equal to negative 9 plus or minus 5 square root of 11. For 8, we have 2b squared plus 16b is equal to 4. We're going to divide everything by 2 to give ourselves b squared plus 8b is equal to 2. Our b is 8, so that's 8 over 2 squared, which gives us 4 squared, which is 16. We add the 16 to both sides, so b squared plus 8b plus 16 is equal to 2 plus 16. Factor b plus 4 squared add is equal to 18. Take the square root of both sides. So b plus 4 is equal to the 18 is 3 and 6. 6 is 3 and 2, plus or minus 3, square root 2. We're going to subtract the 4 from each side. They're not like terms, so b is equal to negative 4, plus or minus 3, square root 2. For 9, we have 5x squared minus 20x is equal to 10. So we are going to divide everything by that 5 to get x squared minus 4x is equal to 2. Now we're going to work with this equation. So our b is negative 4. That's going to be negative 4 over 2 squared, which is going to be negative 2 squared, which is 4. We add the 4 to both sides. So x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 4. Factor the left, x minus 2 squared. Add the right is equal to 6. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. Now move the 2 over. Add it to both sides. So x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. For our next example, we have w squared plus w is equal to 3. So our b here is 1. We're going to have 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. We add that to both sides. We have w squared plus w plus 1 fourth is equal to 3 over 1, which is 12 over 4, plus 1 over 4. We will then have w squared plus w plus 1 fourth is equal to 13 over 4. So we're going to factor the left side. That's going to be w plus 1 half squared is equal to 13 over 4. I don't know why I rewrote that twice. Okay, so then we are going to take the square root of both sides now. 
we're going to have w plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. So add, I'm sorry, subtract the 1 half from each side. So w is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 2. For 11, we have x squared minus 5x is equal to 2. So your b is negative 5. That's going to be negative 5 over 2 squared, which is 25 over 4. I'm going to add that to both sides of that equal sign. So x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4 is equal to 8 over 4 plus 25 over 4. So x minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to the 25 plus 8 gives us 33 over 4. So take the square root of both sides here. x minus 5 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3, 33 over 2. So we're going to add the 5 over 2 to, from, to both sides. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 33 all over 2. For 12, we have c squared minus 7c minus 2 is equal to 4. We're going to start by adding the 2 to both sides. We have c squared minus 7c is equal to 6. Our b is negative 2, so that's, I'm sorry, negative 7, so that's negative 7 over 2 squared, which is 49 over 4. We're going to add this to both sides. Remember that 6 is the same thing as 24 over 4. So c squared minus 7c plus 49 over 4 is equal to 24 over 4 plus 49 over 4. Factor the left side, c minus 7 over 2 squared is equal to, add the right side, the 24 plus 49, 4 plus 9 is 13, carry the 1, 3 plus, seven, plus 4 is 7 over 4. Take the square root of both sides. We're going to have c minus 7 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 73 over 2. So then from here, add the 7 over 2 to both sides. Oops. So we have c is equal to 7 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 73 over 2. Now, you see how the, our denominators are the same. We can write this as c is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 73 all over 2. For 13, we have x squared is equal, I'm sorry, x squared minus 12x plus 35 is equal to 0. So we're going to move that 35 over, subtract it from both sides. So we have x squared minus 12x is equal to negative 35. Our b is negative 12, so it's negative 12 over 2 squared. That's going to give us negative 6 squared, which is 36. We add that to both sides of our equal sign. So x squared minus 12x plus 36 is equal to negative 35 plus 36. We're going to have x minus 6 squared is equal to 1. We take the square root of both sides. We get x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus 1. So again, we're going to turn this into two equations. x minus 6 is equal to negative 1 x minus 6 is equal to positive 1. So add the 6 to both sides. We get x is equal to 5, and x is equal to 7. For 14, we have y squared plus 15y plus 56 is equal to 0. So we're going to subtract the 56 from each side. We're going to have y squared plus 15y is equal to negative 56. Our b is 15, so that's 15 over 2 squared, which is 225 over 4. We're going to multiply, or sorry, add this to both sides. So y squared plus 15y 
plus 225 over 4 is equal to 56 over 1. The negative 56 times 4 is going to give us negative 224 over 4 plus 225 over 4. I just turned that negative 56 into a fraction with 4 in the, as the denominator. That's all we did. Okay, so from here we're going to factor the left side. So y plus 15 over 2 squared is equal to 1 fourth. We're going to take the square root of both sides here. So y plus 15 over 2 is equal to plus or minus 1 half. So again, we're going to turn this into two equations y plus 15 over 2 is equal to negative 1 half, and y plus 15 over 2 is equal to positive 1 half. So then move the 15 over 2 over by subtracting it from each side. So y is equal to negative 16 over 2, and y is equal to negative 14 over 2. So if we simplify these, we get y is equal to negative 8, and y is equal to negative 7. For 15, we have z squared minus 2z minus 35 is equal to 0. So we're going to add 35 to both sides. So we have z squared minus 2z is equal to 35. Our b is 2, negative 2, so negative 2 over 2 squared is negative 1 squared, which is 1. We add this to both sides. We get z squared minus 2z plus 1 is equal to 35 plus 1. So z minus 1 squared is equal to 36. We take the square root of both sides we have z minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 6. From here, we're going to form two equations, so z minus 1 is equal to negative 6, and z minus 1 is equal to positive 6. We add the 1 to both sides, so we get that z is equal to negative 5, and z is equal to 7. For our last one here, we have 3c squared minus 7c is equal to 6. So we're going to divide everything by that 3 to get c squared minus 7 over 3c is equal to 2. From here, our b is that negative 7 over 3. So we're going to do negative 7 over 3 divided by 2 over 1 squared, which is negative 7 over 3 times 1 over 2 squared and that is negative 7 over 6 squared. So that's 49 over 36. We're going to add this to both sides of this equation here. So we're going to have c squared minus 7 over 3c plus 49 over 36 is equal to 2 over 1, which is also 72 over 2. Sorry, two, 72 over 36. So from here, we're going to have c squared minus 7 over 6. I'm sorry, c minus, oh my goodness, c minus 7 over 6 squared is equal to the 72 plus the 49 gives us 121 over 36. From here, we take the square root of both sides, and we have c is equal to 7 over 6 is equal to plus or minus 11 over 6. So again, we're going to make two equations. So we have c minus, there we go, c minus 7 over 6 is equal to negative 11 over 6, and c minus 7 over 6 is equal to positive 11 over 6. We add the 7 over 6 to both sides. for both of these. And we are going to have c is equal to negative 11 plus 7 is negative 4 over 6. 
and then the other is going to give us c is equal to 18 over 6. So these all both simplify to give us c is equal to negative 2 thirds as well as c is equal to 3.